On March 21st, NOAA issued its 2019 spring outlook for flood risk, temperature, and precipitation. A very wet winter has primed portions of the Central Plains for late winter flooding. The flood outlook highlights areas at risk of major flooding concentrated along the Mississippi, the Missouri, and the Red River of the North. Moderate flood risk is elevated surrounding those rivers in the Lower Ohio, Cumberland, and Tennessee rivers, in New England, in Texas, and in Idaho. Minor flood potential covers much of the central and eastern U.S., as well as portions of California, Nevada, and the Pacific Northwest. Most areas with an enhanced risk of flooding also have a tilt in the odds towards above average precipitation. Much of Alaska also has an elevated chance of above average precipitation. Hawaii, the Alaskan Panhandle, and the Pacific Northwest have elevated chances of below average precipitation. Remember, for every point on these maps, there exists the possibility that there will be a below, near, or above average outcome. The maps show only the most likely category, with higher probabilities indicating greater confidence. EC stands for equal chances, locations where there is no tilt in the odds towards above, near, or below average temperature or precipitation. Below average temperatures are most likely in the central and northern plains, while above average temperatures are favored east of the Mississippi, in much of the west, and in Alaska and Hawaii. After a wet winter from coast to coast, drought is not a large concern this spring. Dangerous and severe weather are always possible, so stay tuned to NOAA to be weather ready and climate smart. It's amazing just how many states that have flooded out or have been at risk of serious flood. And it's also amazing that the damage that it's done. Uh, even in states like ours, where we've had pretty bad flooding, and we would have considered it severe until we seen the Midwest. Uh, there was just, I mean, small farms, farmers, they don't stand a chance. But there's a reason for, I think, all these flooding and everything. And if you stick with the video to the very end, you'll see that reason. I don't think this is an act of God. And I don't think this is an act of nature. That I think this is an act that's intentional. I don't believe in in uh, chance. Let's say there's a reason for all this. What I want to do is just show some pictures, and a little later on maybe put some music with it, pictures that I found on the internet. And then there's a few pictures that I took from around here. But I just took our street. I didn't go to the other streets, some of which were a lot worse flooded than ours. Uh, the first pictures are of East Tennessee. And the damage was done there. It killed four altogether. The livestock, I mean, like we, ours is on a hill, so we didn't have nobody drown. But it took its toll on them physically. I've never seen our cattle look like this. And it's not just ours, it's been everybody's that I've seen. And it's people that are real good at managing their cattle, and, or sheep, or equine, if, they, if the equine was out. But as I said before, I don't think. I don't believe in happy little accidents. Uh, I think this is pur this is pur purposely done, and I think for very nefarious reasons. And like I say, if you hold on to the end of this, you'll see. Meanwhile, uh, if of course we're preppers, but then again. What people are calling preppers now used to just be called normal in the country. But you never took nothing for granted. That's so why you had stuff like uh, make hay while the sun's shining and sayings like that. 
and it's why you probably seen little things where it says the farmer never throws nothing away. But for now, if you run across some decent deals, I would suggest you definitely buy it and stock it. Uh, canned goods in particular. But, uh, you know, what's, what they're losing out there, they're losing a whole lot of beef. And like around here, we raise our beef. Some we do sell local. But a lot goes to the stock barn. They get sold, they get bought, they get took out to the Midwest for uh, feedlots. They lost a ton of cattle this year. I mean, they just had nowhere to go with it. They lost a lot of hogs. So pork and beef, you know, it's going to go high. Wheat, corn, soy, which you shouldn't be eating soy to start with. Um, I'm sure there's some other crops there too. Somebody said potatoes. It's not that they already had them in the ground. It's that the ground may probably will not. The water won't dissipate in time and the ground dry up enough to plant. That's what we're running into here is the water not dissipate. And we had a fraction of what they had. So, if you, you know, what's going to be a hit is ethanol gas, which I don't burn. Uh, and if you get to looking in the store, if you notice how many things they slip soy into, or they slip high fructose corn syrup, or they slip uh, cornstarch, uh, wheat, gluten, any of that. I mean, any about any of the prepackaged foods have that garbage in them. But as I say, if you watch it to the end, I think you'll see why I say this was not by chance. This was not an act of nature.
Now some of these were factory farms out there and some of these were family farms. And I'm just about willing to bet that the factory farms will be took care of while the family farms won't. And so they'll be eating up other factory farms. That's just what I've seen over the years. Stances on GMOs, genetically modified organisms, in agriculture have become well known over the years. Current President Donald Trump's stance was a bit more of a mystery until now. Speaking to a crowd in Nashville, Tennessee on January 8, Trump finally used the word biotechnology for the first time as president, and did so in a positive way in reference to its uses in agriculture, GMOs. Considering the economic impact the industry has on the United States' bottom line, what Trump said should come as no surprise. But for people in the natural and organic movement, it's still likely to come as a serious disappointment, and challenge moving forward for that matter. Streamlining Regulations for GMO Industry, Trump In 1987, then Vice President George H. W. Bush visited Monsanto headquarters in the St. Louis, MO area and offered up a promise that would usher in a new area of GMO-focused agriculture, call me, we're in the direct business. The comments were made to Monsanto executives on a tour, and were aimed at assuring them that the United States was open for business, and ready to begin the process of allowing the controversial technology that includes gene splicing plants in a lab to be resistant to Monsanto's herbicides. Now, even as countries across Europe and around the world are banning the crops due to environmental and safety concerns, the U.S. appears ready to up the ante as the leading world producer of Monsanto and other companies' GMOs. We are streamlining regulations that have blocked cutting-edge biotechnology, setting free our farmers to innovate, thrive, and to grow, Trump said according to MIT Technology Review in Nashville at a meeting of the American Farm Bureau Federation. Oh, are you happy you voted for me? You are so lucky that I gave you that privilege, he continued according to the article. Washington under the guise of transparency, the Trump administration's proposed GMO disclosure rule may in fact codify secrecy and confusing labels for genetically modified foods, said Scott Faber, EWG's Senior Vice President for Government Affairs. The Department of Agriculture's draft disclosure rule could exempt 10,000 foods that contain highly refined GMO sugars and oils. With that loophole, roughly one in six foods produced with GMOs might be exempt from disclosure. The rule would make on-package labeling of GMOs optional, and if companies did choose to disclose GMOs on labels, they could use language and symbols likely to confuse consumers. Instead of the widely understood terms genetically modified or genetically engineered. And now, as I promised, the reason for all this flooding, uh, a lot of times there was a, there was a woman that used to be the Secretary of Agriculture, I believe it was. She said that they would do a lot of stuff like drought and flooding to uh, run the family farms out of business so that the big corporate farms could suck them up. They could get the land for little or nothing. Uh, whether you believe in this or not, totally up to you. There's tons upon tons upon tons of evidence. Uh, they've been at this a long, long time. And there's thousands, tens of thousands of different uh, ways they've got to control the weather. Case in point, the Ho Chi Minh Trail, they were able to flood it out. Of course, what the dumbasses didn't know was when they flooded it out, you know, the, the little Vietnamese people, they were just going right on through, but what it did was it mobbed our troops down. Not that they really cared. I think a lot of times that the movie Braveheart or the king, they're down there fighting on the battlefront, and uh, he tells them to loose the arrows, and he said, but sir, well, when we hit our people, he said, mm, I suppose we will loose the arrows.
it's I mean there's there's definitely climate change right here this blows my mind and I didn't realize it until uh, I seen a guy the other day used to you could go Google or Yahoo anything and you would pick up all kinds of stuff now try googling anything try googling chemtrails almost everything you google will either be against it or if you try to google a certain term uh, or flooding almost every return is the big news agencies ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox and don't tell me Fox is a Christian name and show why, else, why would if they were so Christian why do they have the thing Lucifer uh, you can look at their programming and tell but they are engineering the planet Whether you want to believe it or not, it's up to you. But it'd be best to stock up because what's coming, it's going to be expensive food and it's going to be junk food. You're going to eat what they want you to eat. They'll probably use CRISPR to do the meat. And if you're not familiar with that, you need to look that up too. But anyway. That's that.